<laughs> so I'm a, uh, I'm a filmmaker and a comic book writer, and uh, these days I'm best known for um, writing various things for Marvel Comics, including this book right here that you see. It's Extreme X-Men. came out on uh, Wednesday, actually, yesterday. Um, this is my latest uh, book for Marvel. Um, I, uh, I write the comics. I don't draw them. I'm working with artists. Uh, and um, But... Uh, since you guys are talking about multimedia stuff and transmedia stuff, I thought I'd focus on the way uh, with all of these different projects I've done, I've been trying to, uh, to work them in different arenas, in different media. Um, so, so here's, here's uh, Extreme X-Men, and it is a, you know, a traditional comic book. Uh, you can actually go to comicsology.com and download it or, or buy it if you want. It's available digitally, um, which is something comics are doing more and more. But as part of the, uh, this, the promotion for this, I, uh, I made a, um, I've been making little trailer videos uh, using art from the pages, which I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm shooting myself talking about it. I'm using art from the book and uh, doing these little one, one or two minute trailers to, uh, to sort of reach new audiences. So that's, um, that's using different media. That's, that's sort of just using it for promotion. And I think that's a, a key thing. I mean, whether you're working for a, what's a big company like Marvel or whether you're doing independent stuff, um, I think it's critical these days to get uh, to get comfortable with using Twitter and YouTube and these different uh, medium to get get stuff out there. It's just um, there's uh, there's so much competition for people's attention, uh, and there's also just a very I mean people congregate in all kinds of different places right now. I mean the interesting thing is that uh, okay so this video if you look down here this is on my own podcast uh, YouTube channel and it's gotten 4,000 views there on the Marvel site. Um, it got something like 20,000 views as well. So, um, and that's 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 a pretty shocking. I mean, that that's not a, that's not a huge number when you look at what viral videos do in the world. But when you look at a uh, kind of you know guerrilla marketing for a uh, for a for um, for a comic book, that's 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 pretty decent, and it actually can have a pretty big impact when you think about the fact that. Uh, a successful comic these days sells about 40,000 in the direct market um, of comic book stores. So anyway, I'm just saying that you can, you know, use these things to, to get your stuff out there. Uh, and, you know, being able to do that is, is a bonus, I think, as a independent or corporate media maker. Um, the, uh, the, but then there's, there are other ways to use uh, uh, multimedia, not just for promotion, but for for furthering your story, and, and in fact, for doing both. Um, and Tommy was talking about, you know, th this kind of stuff. He's doing this brilliantly with his work. Um, uh, here's here's a little bit of stuff I'm doing with mine. This is a character um, called Amadeus Cho, and it's a character that I created a number of years ago for for Marvel. And he's been in a bunch of different Marvel books, and um, including, uh, you know, he's done things like fought Thor. He teamed up with Hercules. He was part of a, a, a series called Incredible Hercules, and it was Amadeus Cho and, and Hercules. And, and in a kind of funny, I mean, it's, um, I'm, I'm uh, multiracial. I'm half Korean and half white. And uh, one of my motivations, I'll be, you know, just totally frankly, one of my motivations for doing uh, media is um, because I care about getting different people up on the big screen. Uh, that, I mean, it's always been something I've been aware of. Um, and, uh, and I like, you know, I like, diverse uh, characters and uh, so getting Amadeus Cho out into the world was uh, was important to me. Um, I loved I loved Marvel because you know I when I proposed the idea for the character they were like go for it. And no one ever said hey maybe an Asian American kid is not so marketable. They just said go for it. But then I did everything I could to build up his presence in the world um, by uh, uh, you know, I, uh, when, when, when he first came out, I was, uh, you know, uh, doing interviews and, and promoting him to various Asian American sites all over the place and, and all kinds of sites. And, um, uh, and then we were just, I, you know, at every opportunity, I'd look for ways to kind of help build him up, both in the comics and in the outside world. And uh, so um, we have a Twitter feed for Amadeus, and this is him as a fictional character. Uh, and uh, and um, I, he jokes with uh, you know with other people with me. Uh, I mean, we we would do this kind of you know goofy thing where he's calling me a crazy old man or or you know, and and I'm I'm, I'm ribbing him as the uh, as this uh, scrappy young kid and all this kind of stuff. But but it's a sort of a fun way to you know to to 
to keep that character's voice out there um, and uh, and help you know promote the and promote the books at the same time. So it's uh, it's kind of fun. Like I was working on a Doctor Strange book recently, and Amadeus of course pipes in and says, "What about me?" Because uh, he hasn't been in a book in a little while. So, uh, but you know that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, if you have a character that works well uh, for with with a voice that's distinctive and can work in this kind of environment, that's been a fun way to to do stuff. Um, uh, Amadeus teamed up with a character called Hercules, uh, who is indeed Hercules of myth, but he's also a character in the Marvel Universe. And this is just another kind of funny way the internet intersected with these characters' paths. This this panel you're looking at here was a uh, it was a it was a, a panel in one of the Incredible Hercules books where Amadeus is uh, basically Hercules is looking. He happens to to notice Amadeus um, with a uh, Amazonian princess. It's a long story, but Am but Amadeus is uh, is uh, having a private moment with an Amazonian princess, and Hercules is peeking in the window and giving him a big thumbs up, and Amadeus is like, "Get out of here!" But um, but this picture of Hercules with the thumbs up was just pretty hilarious, and um, it got picked up on the internet, and uh, it turned into one of these internet memes, and people uh, somebody somebody put cool story bro on it, and uh, and people started using this as their internet icon, you know, their their Twitter icons or whatever, and and uh, and other people started doing riffs on it, such as riveting tail chap and uh, epic saga Luke. So, um, but this wasn't anything we could ever have planned for, you know what I mean? But it is, it's interesting that, uh, you know, the, the internet is a world in which people take stuff they think is funny and they run with it. And if you have a book that is um, amenable to that in some way, or if you have whatever your project is, you know, when this kind of stuff happens, um, you know, embrace it and, and, and run with it if you can. I mean, we, we, just, we thought it was hilarious. I don't know that we did anything. We didn't do anything to create it, and we just um, were, were thrilled when it happened. But um, but that kind of stuff is uh, is worth um, you know uh, being you know being aware of, I guess. Um, the uh, and then I uh, uh, and, and then I wanted to talk about another book that I'm working on called uh, Vision Machine. These are character designs for Vision Machine. Um, Vision Machine is a uh, graphic novel that was funded by the Ford Foundation. And the purpose of the graphic novel um, was to help people think about the world that's coming in, in, in the coming years. In particular, think about personal technology and the way um, media is changing and media making is changing, particularly for independent media makers. Um, and uh, so, so the storyline is about a world in which um, Sprout Computers is introduced to this fantastic pair of, uh, of glasses called the II. And uh, if you're wearing the II, anything you look at, you can instantly record. You can instantly add whatever special effects you can think of uh, to it. You can edit it just by thinking. You can share it with the world just by thinking about it. It's uh, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, social media, digital filmmaking, all at the speed of thought. Um, and it's kind of Francis Ford Coppola's dream. At one point, France, in, in that uh, amazing documentary about um, uh, Heart of Darkness, about, uh, about Apocalypse and called Hearts of Darkness, there, at one point, Francis Ford Coppola is interviewed and he says that, you know, the time is coming when the technology is going to allow, you know, a, a girl to make the world's greatest movie, the most, uh, you know, beautiful piece of art in her backyard. And, uh, and that world is coming. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, we we published this thing in 2010, and you know this year Google has announced Google Glasses, uh, which is about half of the technology we're describing, uh, where there, this stuff is going to start to happen. But um, uh, but anyway, so so that, that was the purpose of this book. Um, it came out as digitally. It came out as a. Uh, as a as a hard copy, we gave it away for free. Uh, it was distributed on a Creative Commons license, and the idea just was to get you know find a way to get these ideas out to uh, out into the world. Um, the uh, the cool thing that's going on right now, and I'm actually the, I'm I'm going to switch to my my cam is going to be a little more important than the slideshow at this point because I'm going to show you some stuff uh, through the uh, through the through the cam. Um, but uh, the kind of exciting thing right now is that we are, um, we've taken this vision machine, we got funding from uh, ITVS, the Independent Television Service, and we're turning Vision Machine into an iPad app. And right now you are among the very first people to get a sneak peek at how this thing is coming together. Um, 
it is a uh, it's going to be an app for the iPad uh, and it will feature limited animation a full sound and voice uh, soundtrack and uh, cool extras and videos and things but it'll you know right now it's on autoplay mode here and it's playing uh, it's playing frame by frame the uh, the dialogue balloons are popping up and uh, and, uh, and it's pretty nifty, and we're pretty excited about it. Um, it also has a, um, a interactive kind of feature whereby, hang on, let me see if I got this running. This is the, oh yeah, here it comes. Um, where uh, the, it's got a Twitter stream that runs across the screen there. Um, so that anybody who's tweeting about it using the Vision Machine hashtag, those tweets will pop up on the app so that you can, we can actually run virtual events where we're in reading the app and I could be doing, say, commentary, uh, uh, which you would be getting via Twitter while you're, uh, while you're actually reading the thing. So lots of, um, and, you know, you can, you can scroll the, scroll the Twitter thing back and forth to get to where you want. Anyway, it's, um, so this is just another way in which this comic book is uh, coming, you know, a, another way to, to get this story out into the world um, uh, and to, uh, to hopefully reach new audiences and also to enhance it. I mean, we've got a, a section with, um, with video extras. So, uh, um, uh, you know, we, in fact, we talked to a bunch of kids, uh, not unlike you guys who were uh, with the Tribeca, Film, Tribeca Filmmakers Program and they were talking about uh, the vision machine, the idea of this II and how what they would do if they had an II, stuff like that. But um, but there are there there are cool ways to tell your story and to augment your story now, um, uh, and so that's uh, that's that's kind of one of those cool things. So anyway, that's that's what I'm working on, and I'm excited about it. This is uh, a lot of this stuff is new to me. I mean, I was um, I've always been interested in the web. I was actually doing web design back in the day. Uh, but uh, the iPad app thing, I think, is opening a lot of really interesting opportunities for storytellers.